From this position on the right side of the church, there are several other items to look at. There are four stained glass windows, one large rose stained glass window, and a statue. Looking at the four stained glass windows, which were crafted by Joab Nichols, the one closest to the altar depicts the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism of Jesus is celebrated at the end of the Christmas season and recalls when Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Jesus had no need of baptism, but he was baptized for our sake to set an example and in a way, when Jesus was baptized, he sanctified all the waters of the earth. The second window depicts the wedding feast of Cana. The wedding feast of Cana teaches us important lessons because we could see that the people who were in crisis went to Mary to ask her to intercede to her son on their behalf. Mary asked Jesus to turn the water into wine and Jesus listens to his mother. In this story from the Gospel of John, we see that Mary always points us to her divine son who provides us with the answers for happiness and for salvation. The third stained glass window is a depiction of the Last Supper. This is a unique depiction in that it is an aerial view of Jesus and his apostles. At the Last Supper, Jesus instituted the Eucharist, which we celebrate at every Mass. The fourth stained glass window is a depiction of the crucifixion of Jesus. At Jesus' crucifixion, he was obedient to the Father, and his obedience undid our disobedience and the disobedience of our first parents. At the death of Jesus, a new covenant was established between God and man, and men gained eternal life through Jesus Christ. The large stained glass window above the four stained glass windows was created by Kathy Jordan, who studied under Joab Nichols' daughter, Sylvia Nichols. So there's a continuity of artistic design between this window and the 11 windows that were created by Joab Nichols. This window of St. Patrick depicts St. Patrick evangelizing the people of Ireland. And on the horizon of the ocean, you will see a ship which represents the voyage of St. Patrick to Ireland. His first voyage was when he was a 16-year-old slave being brought to Ireland, and his second voyage to Ireland was as a bishop. And in his lifetime, St. Patrick evangelized the entire island of Ireland. Directly behind me is a life-size statue of St. Patrick that was crafted in Italy and delivered to St. Patrick Catholic Church in 2019. You see in Patrick's hand, he holds a shell which is used in the sacrament of baptism. And this statue of St. Patrick sits atop a pedestal that uses a Celtic knot as seen on items throughout the church.